Well, I'm very pleased and relieved and um, delighted uh, that, you know, once again we find that when we go to court that the law is on our side. Uh, the problem is, though, is that it's taken two years to get to this point. And that's very difficult for low-income workers to find the resources, to get inside a courtroom, to make this argument, to win. And, you know, if Uber choose to appeal this, it'll go on uh, for much longer. And I think um, low-income workers need far better protection than that. Now, Uber's argument is that they're simply providing a platform to connect drivers and passengers, that you're self-employed, they give you lots of flexibility. What's your reaction to that? Well, it is true we are self-employed. Um, it's not true to say that it is just a technology provider. Um, Uber has tried to make this argument globally, and it's usually been defeated everywhere, including here. So U while Uber says it is not a transportation license in um, every jurisdiction in the United Kingdom where it's licensed, um, so it most certainly is a transportation provider and it has responsibilities. See, what Uber wants to do is take its business model into the cloud, into the internet cloud, and avoid all the responsibilities on the ground. And, you know, business and life just isn't like that. Thank you very much for joining us on the Sky News, James. James Farrer there, one of the lead claimants in this case. This is not the end of the legal battle for Uber. It's expected that they will take their appeal to the Supreme Court. But, of course, this has got huge implications. There are 50,000 drivers who use the app. And, of course, Uber is embroiled in a licensing um, legal tussle with um, the TFL at the moment as well. So this is just the latest in its ways.